we know the roof has some leak problems. We're doing local mitigation as we find the leaks, but we would like to do something more substantial. We don't want any potential for release to environment or to the public. Right. So we look at the short-term limited investment of maybe a half million dollars to put a life extension on the roof as compared to the $62 million to tear down the building. It's a much bigger hill to go over to get that $62 million. But we would much rather have the building come down today. The Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in California was funded in 1952 to spur innovation and provide an alternative to Los Alamos in New Mexico, where the first atomic bombs were created. Now, more than 60 years later, Lawrence Livermore's physical plant is aging, with the number of buildings closed down prompting worries that chemical and radioactive waste may be seeping into the environment. But due to insufficient government funding, facilities manager Mark Costella is repairing a roof instead of demolishing the structure, known as Building 251. That's the kind of contradiction at the heart of the complicated, expensive, and struggling effort to dispose of the waste left over from America's 70-year-old nuclear weapons program. If we would detect that there was going to be a roof leak somewhere in the building, we put something up like this. This is our primary catchment basin, channel everything down into a pickle barrel, basically. Funding woes at the Department of Energy have contributed to serious bottlenecks. A January report from the Inspector General's office said some closed structures pose significant risks to workers in surrounding communities, and that the longer these facilities remain standing and deteriorating, the more dangerous and costly they are. The Department of Energy's annual cleanup budget is a little less than $6 billion, a fraction of the $204 billion the department estimates is needed to cover the more than 2,500 structures that are scheduled to receive cleanup funds. A lot of the, the higher risk buildings have huge price tags associated with them, where some of the, the less riskier buildings have lower price tags. Depending on the money allocations, depends on how they put things in the queue, but we are advocating you, you start working at your risk level first. The DOE's National Nuclear Security Administration, which oversees the country's weapons arsenal and related infrastructure, compiled a top 10 list of its highest risk closed facilities. Numbers 1, 2, and 3 are at the Y-12 facility in Tennessee, largely off-limits to journalists and the public alike. Numbers 4, 5, 6, and 7 are at Livermore, including Building 251. You know, and I don't like to say it's good to be bad, but this is a case where you know, appropriate uh, uh, categorization of risks and hazards and, and potential to the public has put us in that right queue line. Uh, so now we're lined up for that funding when it starts breaking loose. For now at least, tearing down 251 will have to wait. <laughs>